closer. What piecewise means is that we are piecing together two or three, or technically we can do as many functions as we want to, but we're putting them together. Now, the reason why we have piecewise functions is because in the real world, most situations can't be modeled with just a single function. Things change over time, or the example that I like to use um, is like your tax bracket, okay? Um, as far as income tax goes, not everybody gets taxed at the same rate. If you make this much money, you get taxed at this rate. If you make this next level of money, you get taxed at a higher rate, and so forth and so on. Um, so that's an example of a piecewise function. It depends on where your income falls, at what rate you get taxed. So um, let's look at this piecewise function right here, okay? If your x value is less than 1, so if you do left of x equals 1, our function looks like this quadratic, x squared minus 2. When our x value is greater than or equal to 1, to the right of 1, we look like this linear function, x plus 1. So first of all, let's talk about evaluating for a piecewise function. If I ask you, what is f of negative 4? Well, before, all you had to do was plug in negative 4 into the function and get your answer. Well, we have two functions to choose from. Okay? There are not two answers to this question. Okay? There are not two answers to f of negative 4. You've got to figure out where does negative 4 fit into this function. So that's where this inequality stuff comes into play. Is negative 4 less than 1 or is it greater than 1? Less than 1. So that means we're going to plug it into the first function. We're going to plug it into the first piece. Okay, so we've got negative 4 squared minus 2. So that's 16 minus 2, which is 14. Okay, so f of 0, is 0 less than 1 or greater than 1? Less than, so we're plugging it into the same piece. 0 squared minus 2 gives us negative 2. Alright, now here's where that, it matters where the equal to is. f of 1, okay, f of 1 Notice the second one is the one that has the equal to. So that means we're going to plug 1 into the second piece. 1 plus 1 gives us 2. And then f of 2, obviously I picked one that was greater than 1, so we had another one to plug it to the other piece. We plug it into the second piece, 2 plus 1 is 3. Now, um, you may, they may ask you to evaluate a piecewise function. It's probably more likely that they're going to ask you to graph it, okay? They're going to ask you to match it to a graph. So the way that I want to approach this, uh, obviously you will have answer choices to pick from. Uh, but let's just go from, if we have to graph this by hand, let's see how we would do this. Um, I have a big red line right here because we've got two pieces to the function. Above the line, I want to put some x values that are less than 1. Following this inequality, okay, that line is representing where it changes at 1. Um, so I'm just going to write that beside it, 1, so that I know I need some values that are less than 1. Well, I already have a couple. We were asked to evaluate for negative 4 and 0. So how about we do negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0. And then I'm also going to put 1 right there. Okay, and you'll see why here in a second. Okay, and then after that, I'm going to do, might as well do 1 through 4 uh, after that. Okay, you'll see where I'm going with this, with this here in a second. So our first function is x squared minus
minus 2? Yeah, minus 2. And our second function was x plus 1. So I'm just writing that beside my table here so I know which function is corresponding to which piece. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to my calculator. Okay, instead of like plugging all those numbers in by hand, I'm just going to plug it in to my calculator, x squared minus 2, and I'm going to go to the table, and I'm going to get these y values. Okay, negative 4, 14, we had already figured that one out, but that confirms it for us. Negative 3, 7, negative 2, 2, negative 1, negative 1, 0, negative 2, and 1, negative 1. I'm going to plot those points on my graph. Okay, negative 4, 14, 14 is off of our graph. I think we only have 10 blocks here. It's a 10 by 10. So negative 3, 7. I can put on there. Negative 2, 2 can go on there. Negative 1, negative 1. 0, negative 2. And at 1, negative 1, instead of putting a point, I'm going to put an open circle. Because this part of my piecewise function was not equal to 1, it was less than 1. Okay, So that's where the point would be, but I can't actually equal 1. I can get really, really close to it, but I can't equal 1. Now, Hopefully you can see, you know by this equation, this is parabola. You can kind of see that shape going on there. But then I would look at the graph just to make sure that I can fill this in. Now I'm not going to draw the entire thing that I see. I'm just going to connect my points here and follow that shape. Okay, so that's what the left half of my graph looks like. Okay. I picked x values that were less than 1, according to my inequality, plugged the function into my calculator, looked at the table, looked at the graph to help me draw that part. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing with the other one. I'm going to plug x plus 1, well, x plus 1 is really easy. Let's just do that by hand. x plus 1. 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 plus 1 is 3, 3 plus 1 is 4, 4 plus 1 is 5. Okay. Now, this one was x is greater than or equal to 1. So for this point, 1, 2, I'm actually going to put the point. 1, 2. I'm going to plot a point right there. And then 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5. I can keep going. And I am going to continue going, drawing my line. I'm just not going to keep going with the points. This has a slope of 1. Just a few little reminders there. And that's what our piecewise function looks like. <clears throat> now, it's a lot of times these piecewise functions look weird. A lot of times they don't match up. They don't connect. Sometimes they do, though. But not all the time. Very, yeah, I don't know. I'd say about half the time they connect, half the time they don't. Okay. So this function, if they were to ask you a question like this, this is not continuous. It's not continuous because of this gap right here. These pieces don't match up. It's not continuous. Okay? Let's look at another example. Let's look at one with 3. g of x is equal to x and my brackets always look awful. If x is less than negative 2, it's equal to x minus 1 if our x values are between negative 2 and 1, and it's equal to x squared when x is greater than 1. Y'all think I can't see your cell phones behind your calculators, but I do. You need to pay attention. Okay? Um, G of 5, and I have a little typo on your notes paper. I wasn't paying attention. Uh, I used F, Fs instead of Gs, and then I fixed it on here. Okay, but you all know what I mean. Okay, G of 5. 5 is, which one does that fall within? Less than 2, between, or excuse me, less than negative 2, between negative 2 and 1, or greater than 1? 
greater than 1. So we plug it into x squared. So 5 squared is 25. Okay, negative 2. We've got to be careful with this one. I see negative 2 in two places here. So which one should I plug it into? The first one or the second one? The second one because that's where it's equal to negative 2. So we've got negative 2 minus 1 for negative 3. Okay, negative 6. Which one does that fall within? First, second, or third? The first one, negative 6 is less than negative 2, so that says the function is just x. So g of negative 6 is negative 6. Okay, g of 1, same deal as part b. Okay, it's equal to 1 for the middle function. So we've got 1 minus 1, so g of 1 is 0. G of 0, where does 0 fall? The middle one. 0 is between negative 2 and 1, so we've got 0 minus 1, which is negative 1. And negative 1, it also falls in the middle. Negative 1 is between negative 2 and 1, so that's negative 1 minus 1, which is negative 2. Does the evaluating part make sense? It makes sense how to decide where to plug it in. Okay. Good. Okay. Let's do another graph. We've got to split this one up twice, though. Okay. So we've got to go up to negative 2, between negative 2 and 1, and then from 1 on. Okay. This is the way I like to split it up. So let me just count backwards here. We'll do negative 5 to negative 2. Then we'll do negative 2, negative 1, 0, and 1. And then 1, 2, 3. That's all we'll be able to do because the last function is x squared. If we go beyond 3, it won't fit on our graph. Okay? So the first function is x. when x is less than negative 2. So that means that the y values are the exact same thing as the x values. Okay, um, At negative 2, negative 2, we're going to put an open circle because it's not equal to negative 2. So negative 5, 2, 4, 2, 4, 5, 2, 4, 5, okay. Negative 5, negative 5. Negative 4, negative 4, negative 3, negative 3. Open circle there at negative 2, negative 2. So I fill in the left side of my graph here. I didn't use my calculator because that's a very simple function. Okay. X minus 1, the next piece, between negative 2 and positive 1. Again, another very simple function, so let's just fill it in by hand. Uh, x minus 1, so negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. Negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. 0 minus 1 is negative 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. Uh, these are points because we were equal to negative 2 and equal to 1. So negative 2, negative 3. Negative 1, negative 2, 0, negative 1, 1, 0. Connect those dots. I don't extend my line. Okay? I do not extend my line because that is only good between negative 2 and 1. Okay? I don't go past that point. My last function is x squared when x is greater than 1. So square 1, you get 1. Square 2, you get 4. Square 3, we get 9. This is an open circle at 1, 1. Two, four, and 3, 9. Now I know it's